Warning. This video is going to resist you. Dealing with the logic and topos of the mediatized culture, it engages the destabilization of the addressee. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to learn how to read with your ears, with your body. You are being asked to tune your ears and eyes to noise frequencies, to anti-coding, to the inflated reserves of random indeterminateness. In a word, you are desired to stay open to the static and interference that will occupy this magnetic signal and cathode ray tube interface. The electronic impulse is flooded with signals, and within the powers of the false, schizophrenia dominates that flow, fracturing the latent semantics, multiple disruptions, and the switching on and off of interjected voices. Respond as you would to the telephone or television, for the call of the telephone. The signal of the TV is incessant, unremitting. When you hang up or turn off, it does not disappear, but goes into remission. This constitutes its desire. There is no off switch to the technological. Political analyst here on the news hour, when President Clinton brought his slide. It's not It's not Welcome to the 90s. Let's find out what's the 1940s. Welcome to the 90s. Have you ever thought of seeing it? Would it make a difference? We've got a deal that's shaping up. It's very close. Part one. Everything we see could also be otherwise. Rabbi hired 20 seconds to respond. Poetry reveals a power of the unknown. But the unknown is only an insignificant void if it is not the object of a desire. Not part of his uh, way of thought here. Postmodern theory. The historicizing of modern and postmodern is of less and less usefulness. However, whether or not one accepts the term postmodernism as a viable signifier, a new precision of thought is required to grapple with the media-dominated contemporary culture that thinks not in thesis antithesis, but examines phenomena is indeterminate, dispersed, and polyphonic. See Philip Auslander's introduction to presence and resistance for a more complete explication on the uses of the term postmodernism in performance and performance theory. Postmodern theory. In foregrounding the notion of indiscernibility, the unpresentable, the unnameable, the impossible, the unknown, suggests that aesthetic image manufacturing is no longer concerned with movement of stabilization slash destabilizations where indifference between subject and object the real and the imaginary is maintained but rather with the quote problem of repetition of false continuities of disappearing requiring the invention of a new and different kind of image altogether in quote my interest is to suggest the guidelines for a cognitive map of possible image regimes in mediated performance that might give way to the boundary of the impossible. To write is poverty and captivity if it is not wreckage upon the impossible. Because the impossible is not a margin, a fissure, a border zone but an immensity compared to which the possible shrivels to the edge of nothing. Already I have begun to believe that my project, that of using theatrical performance to access the inaccessible real, cannot be thought through or spoken about without uttering absolute nonsense. Wittgenstein concluded his Tractatus by saying, whereof one cannot speak, Thereof, one must remain silent. Where does this leave us? Abandoned theory? Doesn't any system of thought require the object of discourse to disappear into the system and take on the traits of that methodology? By delivering the unknown into the known, does it not simply become the known and lose its unknownness? Theory as neutralization. Or can theory approach further the irrational? Furthermore, what am I speaking about when I utter the name of the unknown? Do I mean to indicate that which cannot be known, that with which we can never dialogue and is beyond our sense? 
Or perhaps I refer to Freud's unknown, the unconscious, whose operations can be witnessed in the cathexis of the consciousness. Or perhaps the unknown is simply that which is everything, including the subject that is the other to the perceiving eye. Nick Land, glossing Bataille's theory of the impossible, wrote, It is only at the edge of the impossible that the wretchedness of isolated being is grated open, and poetry is the impossible. Bataille theorized that the impossible is the basis of being, and Land carried this thought to the next step by stating that death is the reality of the impossible. Death is unquestionably the great unknown, the furthermost edge of the impossible. As many have suggested, Rambeau was a great poet because he signaled the failure slash death of poetry. Fitchenstein was a great philosopher because he demonstrated the failure slash death of philosophy. And Artaud was performance greatest theorist as he placed us at the outer regions of the impossible, at the closure of representation, at the failure slash death of the theater. To think the impossible is to think of virulent nihilism that attempts to attain the beyond of words, the beyond of representation, the unknown. University. Rambeau wrote, he arrives at the unknown, and when bewildered he ends by losing the intelligence of his visions, he has seen them. Let him die as he leaps through unheard of and unnameable things. Other horrible workers will come. They will begin from the horizons where the other collapsed. The project I am attempting is a continuation of Nietzsche's opening of the Dionysiac through the image manufacturing of the Apollonian, art's exercise of the mere appearance of mere appearance, aiming at the collapse of the Principium individuationists, a continuation of Bataille's impossible, Artaud's cruelty. I also echo Leotard's call for a witness to the unpresentable. Leotard wrote, We can hear the mutterings of the desire for a return to terror, for the realization of the fantasy to seize reality. The answer is, let us wage a war on totality. Let us be witnesses to the unpresentable. The voices of the subject and representation are, of course, the central issues of high modernism. Quote, a high modernist aesthetic then might be understood as engaging the crisis of the subject and the crisis of representation, not to deny the existence of the subject or the real, but rather to reflect the difficulty, perhaps impossibility, of apprehending them. High modernism reconfigures or manipulates the subject. The abrogation of the subject is left to postmodernism. The abrogation of the subject has become a politically suspect strategy. In an article brought to my attention by Gay Gibson Chima entitled The Postmodernist Turn in Anthropology Cautions from a Feminist Perspective, the authors convincingly argue that the devaluation of the subject by Western white males, or as Robert Hughes has called them slash me, pale patriarchal penis people, was generated as a strategy to neutralize the newly empowered subjectivities of marginalized people. To the two generally accepted themes of high modernism, that is, the crisis of the subject and representation, I propose a third. The sense of an irredeemable loss, a longing for the unknown to reappear, is a textual strategy that reoccurs with great frequency, i.e. Godot in its flood of repetitions. Quote, Modern aesthetics is an aesthetic of the sublime, though a nostalgic one. It allows the unpresentable Thank to be put God. forward only as the missing contents. But the form, because of its recognizable consistency, continues to offer to the reader or viewer matter for solace and pleasure. Modern performance. Language disguises thought. As an instrument to isolate an imagined image regime playing for the unpresentable, Deleuze's binary paradigm of image production is useful. In Cinema 2, Deleuze constructs two regimes of the image. The first, the organic kinetic regime, consists of descriptions which assume the independence of the object of discourse. Inside the organic regime, the real is known by its chronological progression and the principles which determine order. 
the unreal, dreams, memory, the imaginary, exist as contrast. In this model, the imaginary and the real operate as oppositions, each substantiating the other's presence. Within a representation of the organic regime, narration is truthful, quote, developed organically, according to legal connections in space and chronological relations in time, end quote. The regime, that of the crystalline slash chronic, descriptions replace their object, substitute, actuate, eliminate, and are subsumed by other descriptions, and bring about, quote, the coalescence of an actual image and its virtual image, end quote, in which narration is falsifying, operating in a, quote, a chronic, non-chronological time, which produces movements necessarily abnormal, essentially false, end quote. The actual is cut off from its motor linkage, and the real is cut off from its legal connections. In other words, stories celebrate life, the organic slash kinetic regime, and poetry exalts in death, the crystalline slash chronic. The powers of the false reside in the crystalline image regime of the unnatural that is derived from poetry. Poetry is that which looks to the beyond of words. The text of Nietzsche, the theories of Artaud, are poetry in that they are a, quote, voyage into the impossible, the will to chance, where everything is divine because everything is impossible. Impossible above all to explain, to speak, end quote. Three, what can be shown cannot be said. The phenomena of technological interventions and performance, wherein the actual performer and the videated virtual subject collide and exchange roles while remaining autonomous, allows for the disruption of performance time and creates a diremption of the temporal slash spatial performer and their aura. The imaginary and the real become indiscernible in a performance that resembles Baudrillard's simulacrum. The crystalline slash chronic image regime of falsity in a technologically layered performance is a strategy that opens up the philosophical problems of the undecidability of truth and lie, original and copy, authenticity and fraud, or as Wittgenstein wrote in the Tractatus, for all happening and being so is accidental. The collision of mere appearance with mere appearance, the colliding and consolidation of the actual and the virtual, shakes open the space of the unknown. Within postmodern performance practice and theory, and their technological interventions of video playback and audio sampling, narration as truthful is replaced with narration as fraud. The imaginary is folded into the real with the collision of human and technological signifiers, and as a result, a disruption of real performance time is enacted. Time and space are signified as mere appearance. A death-like disorder reigns and evokes the impossible. What needs to be avoided is a modernist reality-slash-illusion paradigm, i.e. Pirandello or Genet, that places reality in a state of flux and images illusion as solidified outside of a historical temporality and change. For contemporary theory, the position that illusion is reality and reality is illusion is not enough because the process of the relativization of the real is now perceived as having become more complicated. Both truth and a sense of anti-truth or illusion are absence in the current cultural, i.e. theoretical, formation of simulation. The simulation has taken the place of the imaginary slash real paradigm so that the real is subverted and its anti-image is likewise voided. However, the notion of simulation needs to be subverted as well, or else one must give in and shut the whole of image processing down. Baldessari's whiteboard on which are printed the words pure beauty fulfills the dictum of the liquidation of reverentials. No purpose is served outside of the ecstatic moment of negativity, which is its own impossible, to assume Baudrillard's simulation strategy without critique. Although we can theorize a collapse of the real and illusion, it does not void the imaging of a Freudian unconscious, a Nietzschean anesia, a Lacanian other. The unknown persists. My theory is recuperating Nietzsche's Lebensphilosophy, which Deleuze summarizes as a substitution, quote, of the power of the false for the form of the truth. 
and resolves the crisis of truth in favor of the false and its artistic creative power." End quote. The power of the false and the crystalline, the Apollonian, is its ability to open itself to the unknown. The question is, and Leotard suggested it, how does one map the territory of the unknown outside of the Pirandellian binary model of illusion and reality? The challenge for contemporary performance is how in work where the quotes remain in place can the unknown rupture through? Not simple longing for the unpresentable, but that which, quote, puts forward the unpresentable in presentation itself. End quote. Most contemporary theatrical practices, quote, appear as academic forms, as rituals originating in piety, as Nietzsche said, which prevent the unpresentable from being put forward. End quote. Fucking torture. There are two types of art now. One, that which assumes there is no there there that will only recycle mediated mind imagery in a perpetual orbit of language games. And two, that which through image manufacturing attempts to evoke the impossible. How is this unknown different from the surrealist automatic, which was defined through a liberation narrative, or Nietzsche's Dionysian, which Nietzsche described as a primordial unity? To recite a litany of postmodernist precepts, the unpresentable can be said to be signified through one, a denial of the liberation narrative inherent in modernist notions of the unknown. Two, a questioning of the nature of authenticity, which would disrupt the notion of an un unmediated automatic. Be imaged as a phenomenon of heterogeneity, not homogeneity. The indiscernible informs all. But how does one mired in illusion, language games, and simulations enter that territory? To answer that question in terms borrowed from the birth of tragedy, to individuate, i.e. principium individuationis, successfully, the goal must be annihilation. We and our world of illusion can only disappear in the display of illusion, if only by being about itself, paint on canvas, time, space, and the body in performance. Can art reach the annihilation of presence and a refusal of representation that is delivered in the entrance of the unknown through the chronic image regime? Truth has rights over us. Indeed, it has every right. And yet we can, and indeed we must, respond to something which, not being God, is stronger than every right. That impossible to which we accede only by forgetting the truth of all of these rights. Only by accepting disappearance.